Hello, today we're going to focus on the de Broglie wavelength. And so our single goal today is to talk some more about wave particle duality. And specifically, this is about things we normally think of as particles, but they're acting like waves. Okay, so let's talk about wave particle duality a little bit. So now we know that light exhibits both wave like behavior and particle like behavior. And we have a certain class of experiments, such as double slit interference or thin film interference. And these can be explained in terms of light acting as a wave. And then we have a whole bunch of other experiments, including the photoelectric effect, but not limited to that, that can be explained in terms of light acting as a particle, really a packet of energy that we call a photon. So light exhibits both wave uh, behavior and particle behavior. Going on with the photons a little bit more, you know, they're a little bit strange because they don't have any mass and yet they do carry momentum. And the momentum of a photon is given by this equation. So P is energy over the speed of light. Energy can be written as HF. And HF over C, well, F over C is 1 over the wavelength. So you can write that as P is H over lambda, where P is the momentum. H, of course, is Planck's constant. OK, so. We just talked about that, momentum of a photon. And then in 1923, Louis de Broglie predicted that objects we generally think of as particles, such as electrons, neutrons, things like that, should also exhibit a wave-like nature. And he just simply turned this equation around. And he said the wavelength of a particle is h, Planck's constant, divided by the particle's momentum. and then of course, we can write for particle-like objects, we can write momentum in, in the mv form. So lambda is h over mv. That's the wavelength of a particle. At least an object we generally think of as a particle. And note that there, there is only a wavelength when the thing is moving. Okay. Okay, so let's investigate this a little bit. And so the wave properties of matter are only observable for very small objects. So h, of course, is a very, very small thing, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So the de Broglie wavelength of, for instance, a human being running at top speed is on the order of 10 to the minus 6, 36 meters. On the other hand, for a 10 electron volt electron, and that's an electron you accelerate from rest through a potential difference of 10 volts, the de Broglie wavelength turns out to be pretty close to 4 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Now that turns out to be comparable to the spacing between atoms, and so a crystal can actually act as a diffraction grating for electrons. So these wavelengths matter for tiny things like electrons. For things like us, they generally don't matter at all. Okay, so back to wave particle duality again. So now we're talking about it from the particle perspective, things we normally think of as behaving like particles, but showing wave properties, examples of this, include when electrons, you can pass them through a double slit. And they create an interference pattern on a screen, much like the pattern that you can obtain with light. And Basically, the only way to explain this is basically the electrons kind of pass through both slits of the double slit simultaneously and interfere with, them, with each other to create this pattern. They certainly do not act like particles, like little balls being fired through the slit. We can use x-ray diffraction. That's often used to study crystal structure. And so that's diffraction done with uh, photons, x-rays. And you can also do electron diffraction, neutron diffraction, and you can even diffract atoms of hydrogen and helium. So you can do lots of diffraction experiments, and diffraction is a, is a wave phenomenon. 
Okay, here is the head of an ant. And so in a light microscope, the size of the smallest features you can see is limited by the wavelength you use. So for visible light, we're limited to a wavelength of 400 nanometers. That's at the violet end of the visible spectrum. The features you're looking at on this ant are a lot smaller than that. And you can't, so you can't see these with light microscopes. So you have to use, well, the way we do use these, take pictures like this, are with electron microscopes. Okay, so instead of using light, we're using electrons. And with electrons, we have very uh, good control over the wavelength. Okay, you want a different wavelength, maybe you just change the, um, the energy of the electrons. And so you can have electron microscopes that are much more precise than a light microscope. They can resolve um, features that are way smaller, okay, a thousand times smaller. It is not an exaggeration. This picture uh, comes from the U.S. Geological Survey, in fact. And then I'll show you one other picture, and this comes from the Dartmouth Electron Microscope Facility, and this is a collection of pollen. And I guess when you see this, you're going to see why people are uh, allergic to pollen. Oh, looks like horrible stuff, these spiky balls. And once again, um, you need an electron microscope to resolve the tiny, tiny details on these uh, grains of pollen here. Okay, so there's another example of wave particle duality, electrons, things we normally think of as particles, uh, acting as waves. Okay, so that's our, uh, our introduction to the de Broglie wavelength.